I'm back with um, some DC books. Uh, I just don't want people to think that I'm only collect Marvels, but uh, you know, here I pulled out um, the Spectra. Um, I got into collecting the Spectra more so because I was a big new. I am a big new Adams fan, and. Uh, I was trying to find out his earlier work and I find that uh, the Spectre contains some of his earliest work for DC um, even though he did not do uh, the first issue I decided to you know buy it just for the sake of completeness uh, this is a pretty decent looking copy of uh, number one as you can see it is a slight corner crease there but other than that, uh, this book is gorgeous. Uh, as you can see, the spine has you know, two or three little flaws there, but for a black cover, uh, it's tough to find and even tougher to find such a white interior like this uh, for a late 67 book. It's a, it's, a, it's a good character. Uh, I have to say that I did read through issue 1 through 5 because Neil Adam did uh, issue 2 to 5. So, um, you know, it's actually a, a very interesting character that I think uh, would make for a, a decent uh, movie if they ever decide to go after a, a Spectrum movie or TV series, just like they do the, the Arrow now, which is pretty good. I have issue number two over here, which is pretty interesting. Um, you know, uh, there's a kind of funny interview that they did between the Spectre and Neil Adams, and he was 26 years old. If you read uh, the questions, uh, you can see that uh, it answers some of the silly questions on how Neil Adams get uh, got to uh, be an artist on the series. But, uh, you know, as you can see right here, he did syndicated comic strip for three and a half years. Ben Casey, you know, before he started to do work for DC. And uh, one thing for sure that I found is uh, Neil Adams in the beginning did a lot of his inking. And um, he was good. He's very good for, as far as inking his own work. You know, some artists uh, need... Uh, a good anchor to make their art look better but I think Neil Adam is one of those guys that if he has the time he is his best anchor in my opinion uh, but you know he's he just doesn't have the time to do that himself um, and unlike um, many artists I think he found his style right away and was great from you know the very first stroke of uh, drawing uh, you know, uh, just like John Byrne, I think John Byrne's style caught on right away, and I, th I think he didn't change much until you know much later years where he left uh, Terry Austin. You know, but in my opinion, Terry Austin is the best inker that John Byrne had and should always use for every single one of his books because uh, their style complement each other so much. But look at this. Just look at this beautiful uh, drawing. Uh, like I said, even in '67, in the beginning, Neil was fantastic. Um, you know, if you ever have a chance to pick up a, a, a copy of this book, you will find that um, his drawing was brilliant from the very beginning. Um, I have, let me see, two issue of number two because I had a hard time uh, choosing which one is better. They both have their own good and bad. Uh, they're both pretty nice, to be honest. But you know, being the uh, a, a nut on well center book, it bothered me for the longest time that the spine was not perfect on this book, even though all the corners and edge was beautiful. So I bought this one, which had a perfect alignment, but there was a flaw on the corners. 
so right here I show you right there there's a little crease right there so it's I have the best of both worlds I guess until I can find a perfect uh, center copy with uh, perfect edge and corner I guess I will keep these two great book and number three is fantastic it's a beautiful cover um, you know, Neil is great. I can't say enough about how much uh, I love his style. Um, it's funny because if you look at uh, other great artists I like, like uh, John Buscema or John Romita, in the beginning their style was not um, developed yet. And even John Romita in his early years, in the very first few issue of Spider-Man, after he took over Steve Ditko artwork, he actually tried to copy Ditko style and it was not that good you know until he developed his own style it was it, it, it got better but uh, you know so for sure Neil was on his own from the very beginning he, he, he stood out his style stood out here is number four probably my favorite cover uh, of uh, the series it's just fantastic uh, this copy is just gorgeous as you can see very little is wrong with it and as usual the inside was fantastic with uh, Neil Adams actually on this book he actually wrote and drew everything himself so the man tried to do everything but uh, you know, I definitely think that uh, he should just focus on drawing instead of writing because I, if you read his latest stuff at uh, continuity um, you know, I wish he, he brought in writers because uh, his art was great but uh, I, I can't read those books they just they weren't that good as far as stories and characters uh, and here's number five the last of his involvement with the book it is a gorgeous, shiny book. Not perfect center. But it's a beautiful book. You know, the, the, the little waviness up there, that's not really a crease. That's more so, you know, production related. No biggie. For dark cover, it's hard to find in high grades. And, um, you know, as usual, uh, the inside is gorgeous, and uh, you know I always like to look at the old books because they have uh, ads of uh, other title, and for sure, you know I I also have this copy that Neil did the cover for. Uh, so that's it. That's my um, little video uh, in honor of Neil Adams. Hope you like it, and uh, hopefully the next time I do a new Adams video, I will have uh, some other DC book. Thanks, bye.